Assalamualaikum and good morning everyone so today we are going to um, discuss about the eukaryotic and prokaryotic cells okay uh, just a simple um, discussion between these two type of cells right as well as um, how they differ with each other right now before we go into that part let's discuss discuss about this um, cell theory all right now apparently this cell theory was proposed okay to explain the observation that all organisms are composed of cells and the cell theory has three principles okay all organisms are composed of one or more cells okay and the life processes of metabolism and heredity occur within these cells okay and then cells are the smallest living things the basic units of organization of all organisms and cells arise only by division of a previously existing cell so until today right biologists are still right uh, hold on to this um, theory about the cell right unless someone can come up with something that is differ that can differ the cell theory all right, so until today so this is these are the three principles regarding cell theory okay now there are two types of cell okay prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells and i believe most of you have learned this during your secondary education okay now let's um, do some small recap here on the prokaryotic cells and eukaryotic cells not much about eukaryotic cells, right? They are the, the true cells because uh, eukaryotic cells apparently possess nuclei, okay, or nucleus. And then eukaryotic cells are found in animals, fungi, plants, and protoctists. Okay, now when it comes to prokaryotic cells, these are known as the primitive cells, okay, or not true cells, okay, not true cells because Apparently, prokaryotic cells are lack of true nucleus. Okay, having a true nucleus means the DNA must be protected by a nuclear membrane, but it is not in the prokaryotic cells. Apparently, their DNA is not protected by a nuclear membrane, so it's sort of like their DNA are being loose. Prokaryotic cells are found in bacteria and archaea. Okay, now in a prokaryotic cell they have two major components okay the plasmid and the nucleoids okay now the plasmid okay um, is independent mostly circular and a self-replicating dna that is the plasmid right an independent mostly circular self-replicating dna and this plasmid called for synthesis of a few proteins not coded by the nucleoid. Okay, so one example of the protein that is being coded right by the nucleoid, sorry, by the plasmid is tetanus ex exotoxin. Now the nucleoid, okay. It houses the primary DNA for the prokaryotic cell. And this nucleoid called for synthesis of most proteins. Okay, guys, so now plasmid, you'll be um, learning more about plasmid in the third semester later. Okay, now this is a prokaryotic cell, obviously, right? Now, so let's um, take a closer look, right? On structure of the prokaryotic cell so we can see a prokaryotic cell right they come with many types some of them being spherical some of them being rod some of them being um, spiral shape right some of them has like a comma shape a comma shape that is uh, one of the famous one is the vibrio cholerae 
right, that causes cholera. Okay, so this is a typical rod shaped bacterium. Okay, like what I mentioned earlier, examples of prokaryotic cell are a bacteria and archaea. Okay, now on the surface of a prokaryotic cell, there are many fimbria. You can see the fimbria here, right? So like a hair-like projections. This um, fimbria is an attachment structure okay, on the surface of some prokaryotes. And the function of this fimbria is to assist the attachment okay, of the prokaryotic cell on the surface of any uh, materials, especially the host. Okay? So fimbria assists for surface attachment. Okay. So fimbria ni membantu lah prokaryotic cell ni melekat di mana-mana permukaan. Okay. So this explains why okay, bacteria, for example, can uh, stick to any surface, almost to any surface. But again, class, let me rephrase. This fimbria found most on surface of uh, prokaryotic. Okay, some they don't have this fimbria. Now, nucleoids, like I mentioned earlier, right? So this is the nucleoid. It is a region where the cell's DNA is located. Okay, and then always remember, their this prokaryotic cell DNA is not enclosed by any membrane right uh, plasmid is not shown here apparently right plasmid is not shown here <clears throat> okay now the nucleoids also all right where the bacterial chromosome can be found you can see the chromosome here all right the chromosome made up the dna now there are many ribosomes Okay, you can see this tiny circular thing here. These are the ribosomes, right? And ribosomes, as, as um, what you have learned before, right? They are complexes that synthesize protein through translation process. Okay, then we have the plasma membrane. Can you see the plasma membrane here? Okay, this is the plasma membrane. Look carefully. Okay, plasma membrane membrane that enclose the cytoplasm okay so after the plasma membrane we have the capsule you can see the capsule here right this is the capsule okay you can see the capsule right so like it's a jelly like outer coating okay of many prokaryotes then prokaryotes they have this flagella or flagellum Right, flagella being being singular, flagellum being plural. So it's the locomotion or locomotion organelles of some bacteria. Okay, some bacteria they don't have uh, flagella. Right. So the function of this flagella is for locomotion, pergerakan, supaya dia boleh bergerak. Right. Okay, you can see the fimbria there. Nampak cantik saya dan spaghetti. Okay, now next we have eukaryotic cell. Okay, eukaryotic cell. Okay, so eukaryotic cell they have nucleus and their nucleus are being enclosed by the nuclear envelope. You can see the nuclear envelope here. It's very clear, right? This is the nuclear envelope, right? So it's a double membrane, okay, enclosing the nucleus and perforated by pores you can see the pores here they lubang lubang all right why why do you need this pore yes this is the pore where the rna will leave the uh, nucleus to the cytoplasm remember during transcription uh, rna is being synthesized from the dna right during the transcription and then after transcription the RNA will leave the nucleus through this nucleopore, right, to the cell cytoplasm for translation. Now, <clears throat> this is the nucleolus. I'm sure you have learned this before. 
yeah, in biology form 4 or form 5. Right, it's a non-membranous structure involved in production of ribosomes. A nucleus has one or more nucleoli. Okay, and then we have chromatin here, right? Material consisting of DNA and proteins, which you will learn in detail later on. Okay. And then from the <coughs> nuclear membrane, right, it continues with the endoplasmic reticulum. Right now, there are two types of endoplasmic reticulums, right? Endoplasmic reticulum that is being attached with ribosomes and the endoplasmic reticulum that is lack of ribosomes. Now, the endoplasmic reticulum that has the uh, ribosome is known as the rough endoplasmic reticulum, right? While the other is the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. Wow. Now, this endoplasmic reticulum is a network of membranous sacs and tubes, right? Uh, that is active in membrane synthesis and other synthetic and metabolic processes. So, I'm going to say the main function of this um, endoplasmic reticulum is to synthesize lipids. Okay. Now, you will learn in detail about this later on. Okay. Now, after this um, endoplasmic reticulum, okay, um, we have another structure here, which is the Golgi apparatus. Remember Golgi apparatus? Right? Do not confuse ER with the Golgi apparatus. Golgi, Golgi. Okay, Golgi apparatus. Golgi apparatus. Okay. The endoplasmic reticulum is an attachment after the nucleus. Now this is the Golgi apparatus, right? It's an organelle that active in synthesis, modification, sorting, and secretion of the cell products, especially proteins. Especially proteins. Now we will learn you will learn about this in detail later on, right? Right? Functions and how this Golgi apparatus they they work all right on processing the proteins that are being synthesized by the ribosomes. Okay, next we have ribosomes, all right? These are complexes that uh, synthesize proteins, okay? And these ribosomes are, can be found, okay? Either freely in the cytoplasm or cytosol or bound to the rough endoplasmic reticulum, right? As well as the nuclear envelope. Okay, next we have um, lysosome, right? You can see the lysosome here. It's an organelle as well. It's a digestive organelle where macromolecules are being hydrolyzed. Okay, another word for hydrolyzed is digested or breakdown. Okay, and then we have mitochondria, okay, or mitochondrion. It's an organelle where cellular respiration occurs and most ATP is generated. Now, class students, for your level, always remember, all right, cells, they gain their ATP or generated ATP from the mitochondria. Okay, next we have peroxisome. You can see the structure here, slightly different than the lysosome, right? It's an organelle with various specialized metabolic functions, right? One of them is to produce hydrogen peroxide, it's a byproduct, okay, which is being converted later on into water, okay? And then we have the cytoskeleton, right? Meaning to say inside the cytoplasm, they are cytoskeleton. You will learn in, into detail about that later on. Now, the cytoskeleton, it reinforces the cell's shape, functions in the cell movement, right? And components are consist of the microfilaments. Can you see the microfilaments here? Okay, and then we have the intermediate filaments and microtubules. And apparently these microtubules, okay, uh, came from the centriole. This is the centriole, and the centriole is located in the centrosome, right? Centrosome of the cell, right? It's a region where the cell's microtubules are initiated, and this centrosome contains a pair of centriole. Okay, and then we have the um, plasma membrane, 
right which is a membrane that enclosing the cell then we have microvilli okay projections on the surface of the cell and whenever you see microvilli right their functions is only one which is to increase the cell surface area okay for many uh, purposes and then um, finally we have this um, flagellum okay flagellum which is motility structure present in some animal cells not all animal cells has this flagellum only some okay and composed of a cluster of microtubules right can you see these microtubules here and you know microtubules uh, originated from the um, centriole right so this flagellum composed of microtubules okay within an extension of the plasma membrane okay another structure that is not shown here is the desmosome which is a cell structure that is specialized for cell to cell adhesion okay and desmosome also is a type of junctional complex and they are localized spot like adhesion randomly arranged on the lateral sides of plasma membrane so apparently this desmosome can be found at the sides of this uh, cell okay later on you will learn about desmosome as well in detail okay so these desmosomes help to resist shearing forces and are found in simple and stratified squamous epithelium okay a fret knot okay the stratified and simple um, squamous epithelium as we will learn in detail later on right the intercellular space is very wide okay about 30 nanometers desmosomes are also found in muscle tissue where they bind muscle cells to one another Okay, now these are the differences between prokaryotic cell and eukaryotic cells okay now of all these um differences between the prokaryotic and eukaryotic cell okay class so you read on your own all right but i just want to highlight two things here all right first in the exam when you write the differences between prokaryotic and eukaryotic again you must use the um word like while whereas to show comparison and this apply to stpm candidates as well as the matriculation candidates okay so one example is all right capsule in prokaryotic cell all right usually present and is a uh, is made from glycoprotein while in eukaryotic cell capsules are usually absent right and then another example is like type of flagellum Okay, prokaryotic cell has simple uh, simple type of flagellum okay with only one microtubule while or whereas eukaryotic cell has complex flagellum with nine plus two arrangement with triple microtubules now this nine plus two arrangement okay like here this is the nine plus two arrangement okay nine plus two arrangement of the flagellum okay you can see there are nine doublet microtubules here okay at the sides and two at the center two means a pair okay um candidates i just made the uh, arrangement so they have um for eukaryotic cell nine plus two arrangement right with double microtubules or nine plus zero arrangement with triple microtubules like what is shown here all right nine plus zero arrangement with uh triplet microtubules this is the flagella at their basal body and this is the tail itself the tail itself is nine plus two arrangement with um double or doublet microtubules okay so i will change here so nine plus two arrangement with double microtubules so this is their type of flagellum okay when it comes to the vessel body it is nine plus zero arrangement with triplet microtubules but when it comes to flagellum we want to focus on the flagellum itself so it is nine plus two arrangement with double microtubules so please make the proper arrangement the errata in your module right Okay, again, comparison between prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells. 
okay so class anything that you don't understand all right about this comparison please ask in the group okay thank you bye